The countertop oven. Stripped down to its essentials, it's just a metal box that heats up and maintains a selected temperature. If it's a convection oven, then there's also a fan that stirs the air inside so that the temperature is more uniform and food heats up and browns more quickly. The concept of the countertop oven is really quite simple, but designers, engineers, and marketers are always looking for ways to make their oven stand out from the competition. The latest trend? the smart oven. Over the next three videos, I'm going to review two leading smart ovens, one from Breville and one from June, and a not quite a smart oven from Ninja. I'll be trying to answer the question, what makes an oven smart? Along the way, I'll be exploring the often surprising science of what's really happening when we bake, roast, and air fry in our ovens. First up, the Joule Oven Air Fryer Pro from Breville. That's a mouthful of a name, so I'm just gonna call it the Joule Oven for the rest of this review. And before I begin this review, I should disclose my connection to the Breville Corporation and smart kitchen appliances more generally, so that you're aware of some of my personal biases that will influence these reviews. My name's Chris Young, and I've been combining science and cooking for nearly 20 years. First is the head development chef for Heston Blumenthal at the three Michelin starred Fat Duck restaurant, and then is the co-author with Nathan Mirvold of Modernist Cuisine. After that, I co-founded the food media company Chef Steps and created the Jewel Sous Vide Circulator. Now back in 2016, the Jewel Sous Vide Circulator was one of the first really successful mobile app controlled smart kitchen appliances. And in 2019, I sold Chef Steps and Jewel to the Breville Corporation. Now I've had no involvement with Breville since then, but my work on connected smart appliances has been put to use in this oven, which shares the Jewel branding with the circulator I created. I should also tell you that I design and build smart appliances for a living. Most recently, the new predictive thermometer from my company, Combustion Inc. It's a one-of-a-kind thermometer that has eight precision temperature sensors that measure everything happening in and around your food as it cooks. It uses all of these measurements to make accurate predictions of when the food will reach the doneness that you want. But it can also just be a really fast and accurate thermometer that happens to measure and record a lot of temperatures. And in these videos, I'll be using it to help measure the performance of the ovens. Given my background, it's fair to assume that I think smart kitchen appliances can be worthwhile, and they offer the possibility of making it easier to cook great food. But they can also be really half-baked, where the technology and the connectivity get in the way of doing the basics well. Now, Breville has a reputation for making excellent countertop ovens, so I'm eager to see how they've integrated the Joule connected experience into this oven. Let's get started with some basic specs. The Joule oven is 21 and a half inches wide, 12.8 inches high, and 17.3 inches deep. This gives it the widest footprint of the ovens I'll be reviewing, but also the shallowest depth. This doesn't translate to an especially roomy interior. While the Joule oven has the widest countertop footprint, the useful interior width is only 16 inches, and the usable interior height a bit less than 7 inches. I think that's a bit of a negative for this oven. In my experience, you need a bit more height to fit a large roast or a medium-sized turkey without bumping up against the upper heating elements. The controls on the Joule oven provide a large number of choices for different cooking tasks, and navigating through the various options is reasonably intuitive. What's less clear is what do these programs actually do? After all, power to the heating elements and speed to the fan are all that can be controlled. And this brings up what Breville calls Element IQ. Rather than sending all of the available power to either the top or the bottom heating elements, Element IQ can route a variable amount of the total power to each individual heating element. You can think of it like all-wheel drive in your car, where a variable amount of power can be routed to different wheels to maximize traction. A built-in oven might be able to draw 5,000 watts of power but a countertop oven that plugs into a standard North American 120 volt, 15 amp outlet is limited to 1800 watts before the fuse blows. By dividing up the power going into each element, in theory, Breville can make better use of a limited power budget. One food that benefits, frozen pizza. This semicircular relief cut out in the back wall creates some extra room for round foods like frozen pizza. The suggested cooking rack positions are also easily visible right on the oven's glass door, 
which makes it much easier to know how to set the oven up for best results. Why is pizza challenging? Because it's a food that actually benefits from uneven heating. The crust is mostly water, typically 65 to 70% by weight. In this case, it's frozen water. So a lot of heat is needed to thaw it and then rapidly heat it up until it's crisp. The toppings are a different story. We want to melt and broil them, but not before the crust is finished. Most pizza ovens manage balancing these competing demands by having a really hot oven floor and less intense radiant heat from above. Element IQ should make it possible to recreate this by putting most of the power into the bottom elements, but supplying enough power to the top elements to create that radiant glow that melts and broils our toppings. That's the theory anyway. Let's see if it really makes a difference versus just heating this pizza up in a preheated, uniformly hot oven. So I think the Jewel Oven's Element IQ feature works as advertised. Of these two pizzas, the one cooked by the Element IQ program is clearly the better of the two. Its crust is cooked all the way through and its toppings aren't overdone. Conversely, the same frozen pizza baked per the manufacturer's instructions in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes, you can clearly see that the toppings are overcooked. What's less easy to see, but very easy to taste, is the crust is still doughy. But my question is, can Element IQ's level of individualized control over each heating element be more generally useful to me in the kitchen? Can it make me a better roast chicken, for example? And that's certainly the promise of one of the Jewel Oven's most prominent features. The app-enabled autopilot. I'm gonna try the set it and forget it rotisserie style chicken because it's a particularly elaborate autopilot recipe that makes use of Element IQ and multiple heating and cooling steps to mimic the effect of your chicken roasting in front of a hot fire. The app also provides visually rich step-by-step -step video instructions, which are a hallmark of the Jewel cooking experience. When roasting a chicken, you have heat coming from the outside, of course, but also from the inside as air in the cavity heats up and the bones, they also pipe heat into the meat. Finding where the lowest temperature is in your chicken can be a bit tricky. By inserting the probe like this, I'm poking all the way through the thickest section of the breast meat and into the keel bone. So I'm sure to find the coldest part of the food, and then I just let the thermometer figure out which sensor is closest to the true core, so I'm not surprised by overdone, or worse, underdone chicken. I'm gonna let the autopilot program run uninterrupted without any intervention, because that's what autopilot promises but I'm gonna use log data from the predictive thermometer to see what's really going on as the food roasts. The cleverly named flight plan shows that the oven will go through a series of high temperature bursts followed by cooling steps that mimic the physics of the rotisserie. Since the Jewel oven can't actually rotate the chicken, it attempts to recreate this rotissing effect by turning the heat up and down. It repeats this process three times before a prolonged rest to let the built up heat from the surface even out through the entire bird. And then finally, at the very end, it gives the chicken a final blast of heat. The technique takes nearly four hours, which is certainly a lot slower than just cooking the chicken at 400 Fahrenheit, but at least it's mostly unattended. The stylized flight plan shows what the oven is doing, but the log data from the predictive thermometer shows that the temperatures around the chicken are never as hot as you might think. The oven's temperature sensor might say that the oven's at 450 degrees, but the data shows that the temperature close to the chicken never gets much above 300 Fahrenheit for the first three cycles. This isn't because the oven's temperature sensor is wrong or that the thermometer is inaccurate. It's actually because water evaporating from the chicken is relatively cool, just at the boiling point, and it cools down the hot oven air around the food, lowering the temperature a lot. But this does bring up an important point, which I'll come back to in a minute. The oven is flying blind and really has no idea what's happening in and around the food. The Jewel Oven's autopilot recipe now says that I should check that the chicken's core temperature is at the target 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But I know from my predictive thermometer, the true core temperature exceeded 185 degrees Fahrenheit. And that, that is an incredibly dry and overcooked chicken.
So, like I expected, this chicken is incredibly overcooked and dry. It went well beyond the 160 degree Fahrenheit target temperature of the Jewel Ovens Autopilot app. And that's despite me having selected a chicken of the recommended size of four to five pounds. My chicken was slightly less than five pounds. Now, I don't think that's because this is a bad recipe or that it was untested. I think it's because the oven has no way of knowing what's happening inside the chicken as it cooks, and it simply can't adapt as things change or vary. Both of the other ovens I'll be reviewing in the next two videos integrate thermometers so that the oven has some kind of feedback of what's happening as the food cooks. And I think this raises the question, what do we mean by a smart oven? Is it about the connectivity? Is it about the mobile app? Or is it about the oven's ability to cook the food to your preferred doneness? Now, in the next episode of the Smart Oven Showdown series, we'll look at a third generation smart oven from June that not only gets feedback on the food from a thermometer, but cooks with a camera. Finally, if you've enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons below. Subscribers like you help me continue to create videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching.